Oh, good morning, Stella. Yeah, what's good about it? Well, I'll try again. A good, good morning to you, Stella. If I were interested in your boudoir habits, I'd say you got out on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Aren't you ever happy? Happy? Look at that stack of mail, and I gotta answer it. Ah, that new little ad I wrote is working. This is really very lovely. Beautify your home with a genuine steel engraved portrait of the father of his country. Clip this coupon and send one dollar. Get yours while they last, complete with frame. <laughs> Get yours while they last. That is the master stroke. As if they'd ever stop printing three cent stamps. <laughs> Any complaints from our art lovers? Yes, the usual. Care to look at them? No, file them with the others. Let's get down to work. Grand Falls, Nebraska. Mrs. Doolittle. Mrs. Doolittle? It makes me very happy to send you a portrait of the father of his country. Bless his heart. And bless yours, too, for contributing. Willie. It's me. Hello, Major. What are you doing here? I thought you and Lefty were working Kansas. Well, we were, but Le how about sending Horseface out to get a basket full of knot holes? <laughs> well, I like you, mister. When you hint, you really hint. Scat. <laughs> Lefty's dead. Lefty? Dead? He didn't give him no trouble when they buried him. Poor Lefty. What a tragedy. He was the salt of the earth. He certainly was. None better. We both owed him a lot, Willie. What was it, his heart? No, it was his feet. He could not run the bullet. Well, wherever he is, here's to him. And I hope I'm looking in the right direction. I hope so, too. You know, he loved you. His last words were, Willie, take this to the Major, because he never let a pal down. Take what? Oh, I'll get it. Here it is. Left to send this to me? Nobody else. He said you was the only one he'd trust with it. Angels defend me. When did this happen? About a year ago. Its mother died right after. Oh, look out, mate. It bites. Willie, get that out of here right now. Nothing doing. From now on, it's all yours. Mine? I'll wager this was your idea. No, it wasn't. Now, I told him how much you hated kids. Hate them? Willie, in all the 20 years you've known me, have you ever caught me saying one kind word about kids? Even kept me out of politics. Couldn't kiss the little brats. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. Oh, wait a minute. I've done my part, and you better do yours, or Lefty's going to haunt you. Willie, here. Here's 500. Take the kid with you. No, no. That ain't the way Lefty wanted it. Take the money anyway. What do you think? I'm a moocher? I'll do all right, just as long as they keep making those nights dark. Now, I'm going to leave you here with your joy. <laughs> ah, it must know that I'm leaving for good. Or else it's not. Well, what do you want, honey? Well, here you are, Major. Give it plenty of milk, you know. It's, uh, when you gotta bribe it to go to sleep or else it'll ball all night. <laughs> well, goodbye, Major. Willie. What is it, a boy or a girl? Time to find them. ought to be enough to sustain you until you're old enough to wage life's battles. Mm -hmm. 
500 enough for you, a little blackmailer. Your father would turn over in his grave if he thought you were a squealer. Just a minute. What are you doing here this time of the morning? Are you the person in charge here? I most certainly am. <laughs> That's all I want to know. You'll have to buy a drink. What'll you have? Same as my pop. I'll spank your pants off. Bring him a sarsaparilla. Yes, sir. With a little water on the side. Why? Eat that. Danny! Lay my hand out. That stew's boiling over. It'll cost you four dollars, boys. It'll cost you all you got. I'm raising. Take the pot. Let me see your hand. <laughs> he bluffed you. He hasn't got a thing. <laughs> he thought they were playing with a kid. <laughs> How bravely you ladies stand there with a smile on your faces, but with your hearts breaking because your loved ones stagger home night after night from dens of iniquity like that. Would that Bertels Bitters could restore this flotsam and jetsam back to self-respect. But he's too far gone. Nothing but a miracle could bring him back. Booze! Booze? The curse of booze. Look, look at that bleary red rimmed bloodshot eye. Hold out your hand. Put it down. Stick out your tongue. Stick out your tongue. Get up and walk. Ow! Would you believe this rum-sodden wreck was once a man? Yet he was. Comes from one of the finest families in South Carolina. North Carolina. Daniel, spare us any further sight of this horrible example. Step in a little closer, please. Ladies, it's tasteless. Put some in his coffee. If he doesn't drink coffee, put it in his tea. If he doesn't drink tea, put it in his milk. If he doesn't drink milk, put it in his water. And if he doesn't drink water, I wouldn't sell you this bottle for a hundred dollars because your loved one is too far gone. But I am selling it for one dollar a bottle to those who feel there is still a chance. My son will pass among you with a limited number of bottles of this precious remedy. Go on, Daniel. Hey, you all, ladies, step right up while they last, for today only. A $10 bottle of Bertles Bitters for only $1. First come, first serve. Thank you, lady, thank you. Another father restored to the bosom of his family. Sorry, lady, only one bottle to a customer. But if you insist... Not so fast there, young girl. Here, here, take your hands off of my boy. What's the meaning of this? You know very well, Major Bertle. You failed to heed the warning of the State Board of Education, so I brought the law here this time. Either you're going to put your boy in school or we'll do it for you. Please be reasonable. How can I continue my crusade against the demon rum if I have to stay in one place so my boy can attend school? My work carries me into far-flung fields. Then you can put him in boarding school, same as other folks do. The best one in the state is at Plumfield, only 20 miles from here. You are depriving this boy of life's most priceless possession, the right to his childhood. The right to play as a child, to think as a child, to have the illusions of a child, and to know the freedom and wholesomeness of being with other children. Thank you, madam. Officer, I give you my word that tomorrow I'll have my boy at 
What was the name of that school? Plumfield. Plumfield. Gee, Pop, won't you change your mind? Plumfield's a very nice school. you like it there. You couldn't get along without me. You know you couldn't. It's you I'm thinking of, Pop. Are you insinuating that you have been supporting me? Well, haven't I, Pop? You said yourself nobody could sell the stuff to the suckers like I can. So... You don't think I can make a living without you? What would you do? And find someone else. You'd have to pay him. That'd make out all right. Listen, Pop, if you make me go to that school, I'll worry myself sick about you. Never mind worrying about me. It's high time I was learning to depend on myself. And if you think I can't pursue a successful livelihood without your help... Gosh, Pop, you're crying. You don't want me to state or something? You've done that too often, and I'm not crying. I just got some soap in my eyes, and you wash behind your ears. Boys through at the tub. Mrs. Hively wants it in 26. Go right in. Hello, Mage. How's the old fluffed up? What is this? Who are you? And you're the one that said you never forgot a face. You remember me now? Willie. It's me, the one and only. Why, well, the paper said you were dead. I am. You're talking to a ghost. Would you care for a gumdrop? But that article in the paper. Oh, the article. Oh, I got one right here in my pocket. Police dragged the river for the body of escaped bank bandit. Authorities today gave up all hope of recovering from its watery grave the body of Willie the Fox who escaped from the state penitentiary last Thursday and whose clothes were found on the banks of the Androscoggin River. Willie the Fox, habitual criminal, had two more years to serve. You know, that's a swell write-up. And they're all over the country, too. <laughs> oh, but will the cops be sore when they find out that I got croaked before they got a chance to collect this $5,000 reward? Look. <laughs> well, old pal, old pal, here we are back together again. Ain't you glad to see me? Wait a minute, Major, don't tear that up. That's the best picture he ever made of me. A $5,000 corpse, huh? How did you do it? Oh, it was nothing. You see, I was a kind of a favorite of the warden, so I just waited me chance. Twelve years, huh? That's all. Now, one day, you know, I drive his hack into town with him. So we're going over a kind of a bumpy road, you know, and the carriage is kind of jingling up and down like this. Well, suddenly, he hits his jaw on my elbow like that. <laughs> well, he goes head over tea kettle into the road. The horses are run away like man, and mind you, when I finally stop them, I'm in Connecticut. Well, how do you like the outfit, Major? Pretty good disguise, huh? You look like an undertaker. <laughs> That's very funny. That's where I got it. Pretty smart of me, eh? It was dumb, Willie. Very dumb, with only two more years to serve. If they catch you now, they'll throw the key away. They ain't looking for me. They're looking for a corpse. Let us hope so. How about this booze graft you're running? Do I get the pickpocket concession? You certainly don't. You're looking at an honest man. I thought we was alone in this room. It may surprise you, Willie, and it sometimes surprises me. But for the last 12 years, my feet have never strayed into the tempting and broad highways of larceny. Wait a minute. Maybe I did drown and don't know it. But you don't sound like you, and you don't look like you. I haven't been me, Willie and she brought me Danny. Danny? Who's Danny? You brought him to me. Left his boy. No. You mean you still got that brat? Willie, Danny's never heard of Lefty. And if someone tells him I'm not really his father, someone's going to tell the warden that you're not really dead. Get that? You know me, I ain't gonna blab to nobody. But no, I don't get it. I'm gonna lose him tomorrow. Lose him? Yes. The Board of Education is forcing me to put him in school. You mean you're going to hang around this Plumfield Berg and wait until they pound some brains into that brat? No. I'm going to try to carry on without him. Now, the board's there. It's kind of pretty. It looks like a farm. It's sort of a farm and school combined. It's run by a Swiss professor and his wife.
Stalin. Coming, Mrs. Bear. Columbus. Here you are, Asia. What's all the excitement about? We just came yeah. back in, too. I only went to the village for an hour. You might think I'd been to China. Take care of Annie for me. Mommy, Mommy! What is it, Teddy? Buttercup is in the onion pack. Oh, dear. Well, never do. You know what a fuss Asia made the last time the milk tasted of onions. I told her they were Tommy's onions, Mommy. Every time she's hungry, she gets in our gardens. She's always hungry. She even ate my hollyhocks. Well, if Buttercup is some nuisance to you, I can sell her. Someone who wants to buy her pretty bad. Oh, oh, no. No. Oh, oh, no. We'll see that you take better care of her. Here quickly, children. Silas, you simply must keep Buttercup's gate closed. <coughs> Nan, that's enough for now. You may be excused. Nan, is that the way you were taught to leave the presence of your elders? What a perfect lady. Tell me, Joe, what did Mr. Reynolds say? He was quite kind, but quite firm. And he reminded me that unless we have $5,000 to buy the house when our lease is up, he's going to sell it to a man who wants it. Oh, my darling. No, no. There's nothing worth your tears. Why would I lose all this when we worked so hard? But why should we lose all this? We have $2,500 in the bank. And Joe, we have each other. We've been a bit conservative. I'll make an investment with that money. Maybe speculate a little. Speculate? Yes. I'll ask Mr. Reynolds to help me. He is a smart banker. Oh, I don't think he will, dear. We didn't exactly part friends. No. Oh, I lost my temper and took our money out of his bank. But what made me the maddest was when he offered me $300 for Buttercup. Sell Buttercup? Why, it would break the children's hearts. She's one of the family. All right, dear. As much as we need the money, I didn't sell her. Good. Good. Do you know how much money we've let people owe us? Oh, it must be several hundred dollars. Over three thousand. We had it, we could buy Plumfield. But that is simple. Why do we worry? I'll just collect it. You're going to collect it? Certainly. Who owes us the most? Tommy Bangs' father. Well, he was very sick, you know. Very well. Tomorrow I'll visit Mr. Bangs. He's not sick now. I can just see you in the guise of a collector. Give me the money or I'll tear up your son. <laughs> so you think I'm not a fine businessman when I want to be? That I only know how to handle children? I think you're wonderful. With children. Now what are businessmen but children grown up? Miss Jo? Yes, Asia? Did y'all send for Undertaker? Undertaker? Yes, sir, the one right out in front. No, Asia, we didn't send for an undertaker. But he couldn't have picked a better time to come. He's in that buggy with a boy and another man. Look yonder. Remember now, not a word ever that your father sells booze cure. I don't mean that you should lie about it, but just don't mention it. There are always snobs in schools like this, and I don't want you hurt, Danny. I made a promise, didn't I? I? See that you keep it. Now you wait here. I'll call you when I want you. 
It ain't so bad, kid. They ain't got no bars on the windows. <laughs> Just because you're a ghost, you don't have to help me get it back in the buggy. No, our buggy's sick. Besides, I want to see what the inside of a school looks like. Hey, look out for that fox. Did you see the ears on him? It's a fox. You would have to tag along. Oh, I ain't gonna make you no trouble, Mage. You better not. If you open your mouth just once, that much in front of these people, I ain't ashamed of you. Major Bertle to see Professor Bear. Won't you all come in? You all? There's just the two of us here. Thank you. You see, my boy has had more than his share of travel due to my far-flung financial interests. Oh, uh, you are a financier? An investment broker? You might call me that, <laughs> yes. You see, as I was saying, what my son needs now is cultural training. Naturally, my first thought was to place him in a school in Switzerland, where I was educated. Switzerland, my home. There's no finer place to send a boy. Except Plumfield. <laughs> of course. Maybe you attended the Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule at Zürich. No. No. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Deming. No, my parents considered that, but they liked the climate in Geneva better. You see, I was always a very frail child. Plumfield is more than a school. It's a home. The children live here the entire year. And while the school is, first of all, for little men like your son, till I take care of my sister's daughter, Daisy. And I have two other little girls as companions for her. And then we have children of our own. So we know how much more there is to education than, than just book learning. We want to fit our pupils for a charming social life as well. Uh, between us, we teach them music, arts, the appreciation of all the finer things, as in Switzerland. And deportment, which will enable them to take their places as the ladies and gentlemen with their backgrounds man. Of course, of course, I, I feel that I can entrust my son to your care. Oh, thank you, Major Birdle. I'm sure your boy will like it here. Want to wrestle? No. Not afraid, are you? I don't wrestle with girls. Neither do I. I can throw any boy in Plumfield. Who cares? The children must be up to something. Excuse me, please. Christopher Columbus! Get up off there. Goodness gracious, come up off here quickly, out of the ground there. Shame on you, fighting like this. He started it. He was fighting Nan. He was not. We were wrestling. I started it, and they got into it. I don't care how it happened. But Dan is a new pupil here, and for you boys Oh, to... don't worry about me. I can lick a county full of hayseeds like these. Sure, if they were all girls, That's right. enough. I want you all to be friends. This is Dan Birdle. And that's Nat, and Tommy, and Stuffy, and Nan, and Jack. Well, tell Dan that you're glad to meet him. You are, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. what a bunch of liars. You couldn't make me say that. Wait, Jack. I'll shake hands. How'd you like that, sucker? Dan, help him up. I'll fix you for this. Stop it, Jack. Now, Dan doesn't know our ways yet. He's come to learn. And he will. Children, back to your work, quickly. Come on, Danny. Let you and I get acquainted. Major Pertle, would you think it presumptuous of me if I ask you to do me a favor. What is it? You see, my wife just brought this money from the bank today. 
and uh, I would like to put it to work. To be exact, it is $2,500. And uh, I would like to double it in the next few months. Uh, maybe you know of some investment. I'm sure you do. You will be kind enough not to mention my uh, speculating to Mrs. Bear. She thinks I'm a very poor businessman. I... I want to surprise her. I understand. Yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Deming, your hat. Goodbye, Professor Bear. Goodbye, Major Ferdl. Mm -hmm. You will see what country life will do for Danny. You will not recognize your own son. Fresh vegetables, good milk, loving care, just like in Switzerland. Goodbye, Mrs. Bear. Goodbye, Major Ferdl. Come here. Sam, I end you this new life, such a healthy environment, fine companions, excellent food, a perfect pastoral. Ah, smell that clover. No opportunity like this was given me when I was your age. And just think, you're going to associate with little ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't that excite you? It's no use, Pop. I don't like it here, and you know it. These people hate me, and I hate them. You'll get over that, Danny. It's all strange to you right now. But I'll wager that in a week you'll thank me for putting you here. You don't believe that yourself. How do you expect me to swallow it? Danny, whatever's left of this battered old life of mine is wrapped up in you. Do you think I'd do a thing like this if I didn't know it was for your own good? But don't you know I'm going to miss you more than 
I've ever missed anything or anyone in my life. Oh, what's the use of all this talking? You know you're doing the one thing you always told me never to do. Run out on a pal. Danny, you don't mean that. I do so mean it. Every word of it. You're throwing me down. I won't leave you like this. We're not apart, son. I'll see you from time to time. I don't care if I ever see you again. So, that's the way we part? That's it. Dan. Son. Come on, mate. You better get a move on. back at me? No. What do you care? <laughs> you got $2,500, ain't we? We better get out of here quick before the professor changes his mind and wants it back. He's going to get it back, will he? What? I'm going to deposit his money in the bank, and in a few weeks, I'll send him a check for it. Are you on the level? Dead level. Listen, Maid, you're heading for the booby hatch just as sure as there's veal and chicken pie. Oh, there's that fox again. Go away, fox! <laughs> Moss. Supper call. You have five minutes to wash up. Now we're going to do everything to make you happy here. We're just one big family. I felt the same way when my father put me in school. But I made friends. And you will make friends too. A man? Coming in, Joe. Nan, we'll show you your place at the table. I ain't hungry. You will be when you smell Asia's gingerbread. Mine, you're dirty. Come on, let me share my new piece of soap. That's very kind, Nan. Silas, take the bags into the house. Yes, sir. All right, now, run along. I'm sitting next to you at the table. Is that supposed to be good? Well, lots that would like to. Don't you care for vegetables? No, oh, that's for kids. Me, I'm a meat and potato man. <laughs> All the vegetables come from the children's garden. You'll have one. I grow carrots. What are you going to raise? A beard. <laughs> That's very funny. It certainly would be. On him. Maybe you'd like to shake hands again. Boy. I'll bet he smokes, too. That's right, mushbags. Cigars. Can you inhale? Sure, and blow it out my nose. I'll teach you sometime. Will you really? Anybody else like to learn to smoke? Well, let's put it to a vote. Those in favor, put up their hands. Not even you, Nan. What a bunch of sissies.
you nap. What do you do around here nice to keep from going Betty? Popcorn? Toast marshmallows? Do anything else exciting? Oh, yes. We have gay times. Asia sing, stylists tell stories, and there's always checkers and dominoes. Just kid stuff, huh? Got a deck of cards? Would you like to play a game of old maid? Old oh, maid? Got anything against a round of stud poker? Nothing. Except the children wouldn't know how to play it. I was talking about you and me and the professor. We only play games that we can all enter into. Oh, here's Silas now. Silas, what story are you going to tell us tonight? Well, let's see. The, the, there's that experience that I had in the battles of Gettysburg. I haven't told that lately. The, that new boy ain't heard it anyway. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm busting already. <laughs> Go ahead, Silas. Well, you know, uh, when I first joined the Army, my feet were awful sore. I had six bunions on the left foot. I told them I couldn't do much walking, and they put me in the infantry. <laughs> they gave me a pair of shoes that were so big. The first time I wore them, I turned around three times, and the shoes never moved. <laughs> what are they laughing at? Don't you think it's funny? Might have been. Ten years ago. Maybe you can amuse us, Danny. I could do better than that. We were down in McGinty Saloon one night, drinking our beer and gin. We were swapping our stories and feeling all right when the traveling man walked in. That's he enough, Betty. You can entertain us some other time. Go on, Well, sir, we marched for three days and three nights. Finally, the third night, we camped in a great big wood. About 12 o'clock that night, the trouble started. The guns began to go off, the shells started to bust. I was shaken with patriotism. <laughs> I tried to hide behind a tree, but there was only enough trees for the officers. <laughs> Anyone want to get down to the village and shoot a little pool? Well, what are you waiting for, Danny? The front door key? It's right there on the whole table. Well, I'll be back later. Thank you, Silas. All right now, children. Time for bed. Oh, 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 oh. No buts about it. Bedtime. All right. Good night. All right. Good night, Angel. 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 It's going to be a problem, that boy. He has no respect for anything or anybody. He needs strict discipline. I think you'll fight that, darling. We'll just give him his own way as we did now. As the blackbird in the spring, neath the willow tree. So it's you, Danny. You didn't stay long. I didn't go. Where's my room? Upstairs at the end of the hall. You'll share Teddy's bed. Sleep with that little run. Where's the cow snooze? In the barn. I'll get you some blankets. Uh, uh, never mind. Good night, Danny. Sleep well. Good night. Orly, made with golden hands. Sunshine came along with these and swallowed in the air. Wake up, young man. You gotta go sleep. 
Come on. Uh-oh, you had a said your prayer. Come on. God bless Mommy. God bless Poppy. God bless Nan and Jack and Stuffy. God bless the chickens. God bless Silas. God bless the donkey. God bless Buttercup. God bless everybody. God bless him. Amen. Do I have to listen to that every night? You sure do. And Silas blows the bugle for breakfast at 6 o'clock. He can shoot off a cannon for all I care. I don't get up until I'm good and ready. That's the best way I know how to miss your breakfast. Good night. What are you doing with Buttercup? I told Daddy to milk her. I don't know nothing about that. She's been gallivanting around in Hodges' pasture again. Somebody left the gate open. Now, who do you suppose it at this time? I don't know, but Buttercup ain't never been able to unhook it herself. Now I gotta go back and get my hat and Buttercup's hat. I'll fix that bull this time. He nearly killed me. Christopher Columbus. Oh, Buttercup. Danny. Danny Bertle. Don't you tell, Teddy. I know, Snitch. Oh, there you are. Danny, did you leave Buttercup's gate open again? No. Did you, Nan? No, Aunt Jo. What difference does it make? The difference? I won't have Buttercup wandering about. Ever since you've been here, Nan, you've heard me say that. I'm surprised at how thoughtless you children can be. Gee, I never saw so much fuss made over an old cow. Buttercup's state champion, I'll let you know. And she's not an old cow, either. She's almost a human being. Isn't she, Aunt Jo? Yes, Nan. Why haven't you milked her? I can't get the hang of it. Danny. Besides, she won't let me touch her. Let me that's do. Buttercup. Quickly, Danny. Thank you. Now watch closely. This is the last time I'm going to show you. You're the only one in school who's been shirking their farm duties. Pay attention, please. You see? There's a knack to it. You try it. Gee whiz. Don't be afraid. Oh, who's afraid? No, 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 Danny. Come back and do it on this side. Why? Silly. You can't milk Buttercup from that side. She's a right-handed cow. Oh, you're joshing. Which one's for cream? Danny. <gasps> now, you see, you wouldn't listen. Come back and try it on this side. Not me. Run along, Nan. Take Teddy with you. Danny, this has gone far enough. I thought by letting you do whatever you wish, you'd see the error of your ways. But you haven't. You're still petulant, strong-headed, and bitter. 
Worst of all, you have no respect for anyone. Pick up that switch. We don't punish people here. We let them punish themselves. You want me to spank myself? No. In Plumfield, we do it this way. We never hurt the other fellow. You mean you want me to hit you? Yes. Pick it up. Now do as you're told. Give me six good strokes. I can't. Daniel Birdle, do as you're told. Harder. I'll hurt you. I want you to hurt me. Go ahead. Again. Again. I can't. I can't hurt you. You only hurt yourself more. I'm sorry, Ed Joe. I'm trying not to cause you any more trouble again. I don't know what's the matter with me. There's nothing the matter with you. You're just a boy. once an innocent babe in arms, looking up into his mother's smiling face. Attention, children. I want you to name the principal products of these countries. Holland. You, Tommy. Tulips. Right. Belgium. Nan. Me. Yes. Denmark? What about Denmark? May I speak to you a moment, please, dear? Uh, you can take a recess now, children. <laughs> These bills have to be paid. The money's not in the safe. Where did you put it? I put it to work. I gave it to Major Birdle to invest. You... You gave our money to Major Birdle? Oh, I had to make him take it. But why? Will you please tell me why you did an idiotic thing like that? It wasn't idiotic. It was very clever. Oh. Now, look here, Joe. You have only thought of me as a musician, an artist, a dreamer. But you have never considered me a businessman. A businessman. Now, uh, sit down. I'll explain everything. Go ahead. Now, this major girl, I sensed right away that he was a good-hearted man as well as a financier. Investments are very precarious today, he said. But I trapped him. You make investments for yourself. Yes, he answered. You are successful? He couldn't deny that. His whole appearance was one of prosperity. Of course, I... I didn't tell him why I wanted to double our money. He might not have left his son in a school that was shaky. Now, you see, you've been swindled. Swindled? Joe, please, where is your faith in people? You entrusted every single penny we have in the world to a perfect stranger. We were perfect strangers to him, and he trusted us with his son. Great heavens. Every time I turn my back... Oh, how could you do such a thing without consulting me? I've always felt that man was dishonest. Now, come, come, dear. I can think of a million reasons why we haven't heard from the Major. But not one good one. He could be traveling. In India, China, Russia. You heard him say his business took him everywhere. He didn't mention one place that might take him. Where? Jail. Now, I won't listen to such talk. I beg the man to help us, and you malign him. If he's not traveling, he's somewhere. And wherever he is, he's trying to help us. I know that. I feel that. But why have you kept this a secret? Why didn't you tell me at the time? I wanted to surprise you. Oh, Christopher Columbus. Joe, 
I know the Major will not fail us. Well, I hope not. I sincerely hope not. Ladies, ladies, how would you like to have a man like this for the father of your children? Say, Major, when we get through mixing up this chowder, I'd like to go over to the stockyards and get a whiff of fresh air. You know, a guy'd have to be as drunk as a hootie owl to get this stuff past his nose. Hey, Willie, you'll have to be more careful. How did that get in there, Major? I don't know. Come in. Fumigating? No, no. <laughs> Just uh, brewing. Cover it up, Willie. Oh, sure. You're absolutely right, lady. Please, please don't open that window. I have neighbors. To what do we owe the honor of this visit? Major Birdle, you must pay me cash for the rent. This check is no good now. What's this? What's this? No good? Refuse payment. Insolvent. Preposterous. That's the biggest bag in Omaha. There must be some mistake. No mistake. It failed. Sisto right there on the back. Closed by order of the court. The dirty crooks. I told you so. You wouldn't trust yourself with that cash, but you go ahead and trust the bank. You may pay me the rent when you're able, Major. You're my star boarder, you know. Thanks. What will Danny think? I won't be able to go back to Plumfield now. I can't even write him. The bears would find out and want the... Why did I ever take that money? Don't worry about it, Major. You got a pal here, little Willie. I'll, I'll get that dough for you. All I need is my little black bag. Willie, stay away from those burglar tools. Ah, oh, no. You kept me under wraps long enough. Besides, you never let me down when I needed help. I don't want that kind of help. Well, you're going to get it whether you want it or not. Willie, if you leave this room, I'm finished with you for life. Now, listen, Major. That brat means more to you than I do. You throw your glimpse of that timepiece. I'll be back here in one hour. This guy? What's he done? Him? Nothing. Certainly I know him. He lives here. Well, I found him in the alley behind the First National Bank. He's been assaulted and robbed. Oh. You better take care of him. He ain't in his right mind. Thanks. Chief, my compliments. Oh, that... <clears throat> Willie, what happened? Oh, I'm walking down an alley, and a fella bunks into me so polite-like, he tips his hat to me. Well, I just tip my hat back to him. Boppo! When I come to, I'm looking that cop right in the star. Me pockets are empty and my tools are gone. Oh, Major, if this gets out, I tell you, I'm ruined. Here, this will perk you up. Major! I'm on fire! Major, do something! I can't... Major! children, please. Don't be so impatient. Just give me time to sort the mail, and I'm sure we'll find a letter here for each one of you. Now, we have the packages there. And one for Tommy Bangs. Thanks, Aunt Jo. Oh, Stuffy. Here's a stomachache for you. Goody, a chocolate cake for Grandma. Where's my letter, Mommy? Oh, Teddy, I forgot to mail it. Here it is. Now then. Silence, roll the bugle. Letter for Teddy Bear. 
one for that. Oh, thanks, Aunt Joe. Bring my letter for me, will you, Diane? And here's one for Bobby there. Thank you, Mommy. Well, you wrote this yourself. Well, what did I say? I can't make it out. It looks like a lot of chicken scratches. No, it isn't. It's my own handwriting. You want me to write to you? You never get any letters. Oh. Who wants to get letters? Any word from Danny's father? No. But here's one from Banker Reynolds. I hate to open it. I ain't going. I belong here. Money makes no never mind to me. Long as this school's here, I'm here. You're the dearest people I've ever known. But I can't let you work here for nothing. Unless a miracle happens, you'll have to leave at the end of the month. Who was paying me before the war when I was picking cotton? I'm free now. I'm free to work for here for nothing. Free to work for people that's kind to me. For nothing, ma'am. Thank God. I fought all through the Battle of Bull Run and didn't see a penny, but I didn't quit. And I ain't quitting now. Pay or no pay. No siree. You got to have somebody to help you. You can't take care of all these children by yourself. Well, you got your hands full with just a professor. No, no, Miss Joe. I couldn't leave. You must make me. Please, Asia. It looked bad at Vicksburg. Very dark, but we held the fort until we lost it. You ain't lost Plumfield yet. Dear God, make us a miracle. Send Miss Joe some money. Aunt Joe! Aunt Joe! Aunt Joe, come quick. Something's the matter with Buttercup. She's lying in her stall, moaning and mooing. Come along, quickly. Now, you children are all going to get out of here because the stalk's going to bring Buttercup a new little calf. Goody, goody, Teddy. Now, go on. Get out, all of you. Get outside. Get Come outside. On. Come on, boy. Don't worry. Don't worry. Come on, Buttercup. 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 You'll be showing up soon. Isn't she pretty? Christopher Columbus, the stork, must be awful strong to carry a big baby like that. That's right, Bobby. Now you've seen the new baby calf. It's all go to bed. Oh, oh. I'll bring you some coffee, Silas. Sweetheart, what are you doing here, me? Mommy, the script didn't come. I was watching. You must have missed him, Teddy, when you were asleep. No, I was watching awful close. Would you like to see the little new baby? Yeah. <laughs> Silas. Yes, ma'am. Silas, bring out the little new cow for Teddy to see. There she is. Isn't she pretty? Look at her. Did I look like that when the stork brought me? <laughs> well, your ears weren't quite so big. Now then, off to bed for you. My darling, say goodnight to Silas. Good night. 
Good Immediate sacrifice. Due to unforeseen circumstances, I am forced to make a painful sacrifice of the assets, chattels, livestock, etc., of Major I. I. Birdles, bitters for inebriates. To wit, international patent rights, copyright, labels and wrappers, a pure Arabian stallion, a wagon, pine beamed, a national goodwill, a formula unknown to science, a $50,000 proposition for $2,500. Only spot cash will be considered. You have no case. But, Judge, I paid the swindler $100. This court's advice is to sell the horse for glue and the wagon for kindling wood. But what can I do with these bitters? You know what you can do with them. Drink them. Next case. I refuse to write another letter. We still have two weeks. But darling, children's parents must be notified so they can make other plans. I'll finish them myself. I won't believe we have lost Plumfield until men come in and move us out. I'm trying to save us that day, dear. And the children, too. What about Danny? He can't reach his father, so what can we do? The wait until his father comes. As if that thief would ever show his face around here. <laughs> Down as a dollar. Well, there's no use in prolonging the agony. I know how you both must feel. How about the cat? Think you ought to include her in the transaction. It'll be very heartless of you to separate the mother and her child. You talking of heartlessness. If it weren't for Asia and Silas and our debts, do you think we'd even talk to you about selling Buttercup? Now, now, I think my offer's a very generous one, even for her. Now, I've drawn up a bill of sale. While you're looking it over, you can have your man tie Buttercup and uh, her cap to my buggy. Call Silas, dear. Silas. Silas, come here. My Buttercup. <laughs> right pretty little calf, isn't she, Mr. Reynolds? They don't come any prettier. She's going to be the pride of my dairy. Your dairy? Silas, we're selling Buttercup and her calf to Mr. Reynolds. Tie them both to his buggy, please. Silas, do you hear me? You've been in a lot of trouble, but, but I'm going to miss you something terrible. Children can get them to change their minds. Shoot, 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 shoot. Hey, and Stuffy Jack, everybody, come here. What's happening? What's, What's happened? wrong? Something awful's happened. Banker Reynolds is in the barn with Aunt Joel and the professor. They're selling them Buttercup and the cab. No, oh, they couldn't need money that fast. I happen to know they do, because someone stole their money. Don't look at me. I didn't steal it. No, but your father did. My father? Yes, yeah, your father. I heard Aunt Joe say so. I was standing right at the top of the stairs. I could have told long ago if I wanted to. You liar, you take that back. I won't take it back. It's the truth. Why, you... I'll kill you for that. Aunt, Aunt Joe! Aunt Joe. Aunt Joe. Aunt Joe. Aunt Joe. Get up! Get up! Both of you! 
Now, what's all this about? He said my father stole your money, and that's why you're selling Buttercup. Jack, please. We're selling Buttercup because we have bills to pay. Now, I want no more fighting. Get back to work in your garden, Jack, quickly. Yeah, run away, you coward. I'll get you later. What's the matter with right now? Why? Danny! Jack! Oh, boy, stop it! Stop it! Oh, Danny! Is he all right there? Children, some of you go to the doctor. Yes, Angel. Can I help you there? Wait, we got him there, Father. Is he okay? Now, I, I hope the boy's not badly hurt. But this bill of sale, you hadn't signed it. Get out of here! But, but I... Bet that'll show him. Much better now. Oh, thank goodness, Doctor. Another compress, please. They were punching each other, something terrible. First Dan was on top, then Jack. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. The boy Jack called his father a thief, and the little viper went after him. Said he'd kill him for it. And he made it, too. Yeah, and then this Daniel, uh... How do you spell that last name again, please? B U R D O E. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. Oh, say, now listen, kid, tell me everything. You know, these city papers eat up stuff like this. Now, begin at the beginning and uh, make it fast. I've got to get this on the wire. Now, your father. Uh, what do you think? It's awful, Willie, awful. I'd rather lose my right arm than have his faith in me destroyed. You can't go back to Plumfield till you get that Mazuma. I ought to get an answer to one of those telegrams I sent. I helped the old gang plenty in my day. People can do a lot of forgetting in 15 years, especially mugs that owe you money. Just got a report on your Albany telegram. Good, let's see it. They say the party doesn't live there anymore. Moved to Leavenworth. Shall I forward it? Yeah, in about 20 years. Are you sure the other telegrams reached the people sent them to? Yes, sir, they were all delivered. All delivered, huh? That's gratitude for you. Well, here we are, right back where we started. Wait a minute, I got the solution. It's the one I didn't think of it before. Why don't you tell a professor and these old ladies the truth? That the bank failed? What's a sense? Approve? Don't be a fool. It started an investigation. Do you think I can stand the cops digging into my past? But you ain't got no record. What are they gonna find out? Everything, including the fact that I was never married. I don't see what that got to do with it. I have plenty to do with it if Danny ever heard that his father wasn't married. Oh, 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 sure, 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 sure. I'd be forced to tell him about Lefty, that I've been living a lie. I won't lose his love and respect, not even if I have to steal the money to prove that I'm honest. Oh, well, now I can give you some help. What about that stamp business you was tripping the yokels with when I brought you to Brat? Too much time, Willie. The stamp racket takes weeks. Well, you could sell a couple of gold bricks. That was always a fast skin game. Suckers would laugh in your face today. I got the idea. The money-making machine. You know, we used to put in the fives and grind out fifties. You always made a mint on that one. I've got to get that money today now. The train will be leaving soon. You was always good at selling the city hall. Oh, shut up, Willie, and let me think. Give me a cane, Major. What for? Just keep your eyes rimmed around here. I'm going in there and tap that telegraph operator on the noggin. There's always cash in those safes, and he's got a big one. Thanks, Willie. But I think I've got an easier way. You looking at that bank? I certainly am. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. Good. Oh. 
Tell me, how much you clip him for? Twenty-five hundred. Hey, listen, you ain't a forger, you're a hypnotist. Well, come on, let's get out of here quick before they start looking for their money. Yes, Willie, but they'll be looking for a Mr. Armbruster, not for Major I.I. I. Bertel. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start running, Mr. Armbruster. <laughs> Too, Teddy? Yes, awful mad. Do you know why? Nobody will tell me why. Look. Pa! Jen, my son. Oh, Pa, Pa, Pa. There, there, son. I feel the same as you do. Oh, Pop, they've been saying terrible things about you. I know all about it. I had to fight with a kid and nearly... I know about that, too. It's been awful. I was gonna run away. Run away? You never believed those things, did you? I couldn't stand to listen anymore. Danny. Did you believe what they said? No, no. I knew you'd come back someday. I just couldn't stand it. Well, I'm back now. And how sorry they're going to be for it. Gosh, I'm crying like a kid. <laughs> Better get that weeping over fast there, Maid. You know, we haven't got much time. Are the bears at home? Yes, sir. I told y'all not to sleep yet. Get out. I got a notion we didn't fool anybody by getting off at Claytonville. Miss Joe! Miss Joe! Miss Joe, Professor! My prayer's been answered. That man that stole your money, Dan's father, he's here. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I, I can't believe it. Hey, you open the door for him and keep the children out. Come, let's give him a royal welcome. Welcome, Major. Welcome back to Plumfield. You'll never know how happy we are to see you. The feeling is not mutual. How dare you ruin my reputation, disgrace my boy. Won't you come in and sit down, please? Do. We can explain everything. You can explain to my attorneys. I intend to sue for defamation of character. Here. Joe. Our money. Danny, go pack your things. We're leaving here at once. But, Pop, it's not their fault. It's the kids. Aunt Joe and the professor are not to blame. Not. I honestly don't know what to say. Enough has been said already. Hurry, son. Help Daddy gather his things, you dear. Come, Willie. We'll wait outside. Major Burton. May I appeal to you as a gentleman? Listen to me, please. It's entirely my fault this happened. The professor never doubted you for a moment. It was I who had fears and voiced them. Unfortunately, one of our pupils overheard me. Most unfortunate and most inexcusable. Hello, Teddy. Hello, Constable. Hello, Constable. Hello, Constable. Hello. Nobody home. Hey, haven't I seen your face somewhere before? I go to school here. <laughs> That's a good one. 
Major Birdle, won't you please let me call the children together and tell them the truth? You and Danny must be vindicated before them. Yeah. Oh. 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 Very well. Since Danny wishes it. Thank you. I'll get them at once. Oh, how do you do, Josephine? Good afternoon, Tom. Are you running a college here now? No, why? I just asked the man that says he goes to school here. Oh, I guess he's a little touched in the head. He's a friend of the majors. Uh, this is Constable Thorpe, one of our neighbors. How do you do? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Didn't think you could get here so soon from Claytonville. Thought I'd have to wait for you, Mr. Arm Brewster. Arm Brewster? <laughs> I believe, sir, that you have the advantage of me. I'm afraid I have. Black hair, carries a gold-headed cane, check trousers, height about six feet three, wears a beaver hat, deep voice. Oh, the telegraph's a mighty handy gadget when it comes to catching crooks. But this gentleman is Major Birdle. <laughs> then Major Birdle should be more careful about signing Mr. Arm Brewster's name to checks. You're under arrest. What? For forgery. Forgery? Then, then you mean this $2,500 you gave us isn't ours? Not now. I'm sorry. May I have the money, please? It must be impounded for the bank. And what did you do with our money? I lost it in a bank failure. You expect me to believe that? Ah, he's telling the truth, lady. Say, who are you? Never mind me, I'm talking about him. Listen, he ain't shipped no out of you in years. The only reason he forged that check was because he wanted to prove to the brat that he was honest. Oh, I can understand you're stealing our money. I always thought you had. But I can't understand what you've done to Danny. What kind of a man are you? What kind of a father to break a child's heart who worships you? It's the law here that's breaking a brat's heart. Him and Danny could have been on their way and a brat wouldn't have been none the wiser. But how could you be so stupid to think that no one would vote? Everything you say is true. But I beg of you to keep this from my boy. You must, you must. There isn't any way. The school is closing. Even that $2,500 wouldn't help. We need 5000 to keep Plumfield open. Willie, you'll have to take care of Danny for me. You've got to carry on. Keep him from knowing. You'll find some excuse. I'm sure Mrs. Bear will be merciful enough to help you. I'm ready, Constable. Let's spare the boy this parting. Wait a minute. Lady, did I hear you say something about closing this school? Yes, you did. Hey, Mage, come here. The brat wouldn't know you was in a clink if we could keep this place open. He'd go right on living here and think that you was out selling them bitters. Don't you get it? <laughs> I got the whole thing right in the palm of me hands, and I got it in my pocket here, Willie, too. stop. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. Here you are, lady. Here's your 5,000. Willie, I won't let you. What's this? That's me. Willie the Fox. So that's who you are. My office is full of your pictures. Put them up. Put that thing back in your pocket, Rube. The lady's turning me in. She's getting a reward. No wonder they didn't find your body. Well, they dragged the river. They didn't drag the streets. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Not only has Major Birdle made it possible for Plumfield to remain open, he's going to let Danny stay with us and finish his schooling. Now, isn't that splendid? Three cheers for Danny Birdle. Tom, I'll never be able to thank you enough. The professor would have been as heartbroken as Danny if he'd ever found out the truth. If we can teach you to follow in the footsteps of your father, we'll consider our work well done. Children, there's someone else who has also helped the school. Let's give a great big cheer for... for Mr. Fox. Hey! Mr. Fox? Speech, please. Oh, yes. Uh, why, children, it was nothing. <laughs> you know, what's a couple of years. Why well, <laughs> would allow me to express your feelings, Mr. Fox? I, I'm afraid you'll be too modest. <laughs> but first, let me thank you, Constable, for being so kind as to drop in and officially represent the mayor on this auspicious occasion. It's been a great day. A great day. Yes, we've all been rewarded. <laughs> uh, what time is it, Mr. Fox? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, we'll have to hurry if we want to catch our train. I'd be glad to give you gentlemen a lift into town. Oh, we don't want to bother you, Constable. Oh, it's no bother. Fair enough. Come on, Major. Step aside, children. Goodbye, you all. Come on, Major. What's your name? How long do you think I'll get? Well, since the bank's getting its money back, I don't think it should be more than two years. Two years? That's just what I owe them. It'll all come out even. Ha! Mate, we could serve that kind of time standing on our heads. 
Say, Constable, where are you taking us? The state penitentiary. You hear that, Major? We lucky the state pen. Ha! That's me, Alma Mater. The warden will be so happy to get his ticker back, he'll probably give us the bridal sweep. Ha, ha, ha! Oh, there's that box again.